Hi everybody, hi, this is Joe here with another movie review. <coughs> and I'm going to do a review of, since Halloween is coming up, I know this month, October 2015, I haven't done all that many, uh, I haven't done all that many uh, horror, horror movies this year, I pretty much did the ones that I wanted to discuss already uh, in, previous, in previous videos. So, and, but I am going to do a scary movie uh, from 1984, and the movie is Gremlins. It is one of my favorite. It is one of my favorite scary movies. Um, the second one, I'm not sure if I'm going to have the time in this video to discuss the second one. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to spend very little time on it because I think it was shit. Um, but I'm going to spend most of the time on the, on the original film. Um, the original Gremlins movie came out in 1984. So it's that uh, Galligan, the Smoking Hot, Phoebe Cates. You had Hoyt Paxton, you had Key Luke, and you also have a very, very young Corey Feldman in, in this film. Now, this movie, um, you know, it was a scary movie and it was a very, very good film. Um, the movie is about uh, Hoyt Paxton, who plays with Zach Gallagher's father in the film. He's kind of like a wacky, wacky inventor, and he's in like the. Um, he was like out of town, or the next town over, it was like in the Chinatown area. And he goes to like this little novelty shop owned by Key Luke. He was playing like this elderly Chinese gentleman. And he saw like this little weird little creature, it was called Gizmo. Uh, no, I think it was called Mogwai. Gizmo was, was the was the um, name of this creature. And so you had to be very, very careful with this, with this thing. Yeah, uh, it had no... Don't put it in a room with bright lights. You mean the room they have here? The it's too bright for them. Um, can't feed them after midnight, and you can't get them wet. Um, and of course, guess what happens? All those things happen. Um, at least it's the other two things. Uh, so, so of course, what happens is that a friend of Zach Gallagher's, who was a high school, played a high school student, and Phoebe Cates plays his girlfriend. And of course, what happens is the Corey Feldman comes over and accidentally gets Gizmo wet, and starts producing uh, other uh, Mogwais. And when that happens, all the other Mogwais like can't kind of like evil uh, Mogwais. So I mean, Gizmo is nice and gentle and calm and everything else, but not the other ones. And one of them, I guess, the, the leader of these villains is called Spike. They has a Spike. He do like Mr. T almost. Well, Mr. T has a mohawk, but he has the one stripe across his head, uh, stripe of hair. And of course, he conspires with the other gremlins that got reproduced, uh, Gizmo, to eat after midnight. Which I don't want to give away how, how they do that. For those of you who didn't see the movie, and they do eat after midnight, and they get into the giant like pods, almost like seed pods. And the funny thing is, you do see clips of the movie um, that, that, that they did, the Invasion of Body Snatchers. Because they, they do show the seed pod scene. Um, you know, in the movie, you know, the woman goes, oh, they're like trying to do seed pods. That's almost pretty much, pretty much what you see in Gremlins with all the evil. And of course, you have Gizmo, who's all scared because he knows what's going to He, he kind of had a feeling what's going to happen. And what happens is they turn, turn instead of turning into, you know, the cute Mogwais like Gizmo is, they turn into like the evil, stereotypical gremlins, and they wreak havoc in the house that the family lives in. And then of course they eventually get out of the house and they ran, wreak havoc through the whole town. And of course Zach Gallagher and Phoebe Cage are trying to stop stop these gremlins, and they, and they have, keep reproducing. There's one scene when they get into a pool. Um, of course, he they made like hundreds, hundreds more of these gremlins, and of course, they wreck all kinds of havoc in the town. And of course, one of the more famous scenes is when Phoebe Cates works in a local bar, and one of the one of the gremlins is like a flasher. He's like a little, it's a little I don't know how he got into a little gremlin-sized wrinkle, but he opens up the wrinkle and it goes, Wee! yeah, that's like that. You know, like it was a flasher, and that. When I went to see the movie, it cracked everybody out. Everyone was laughing with, with a flash one. Um, 
As a matter of fact, that particular gremlin makes a reappearance in the, in the second movie. <clears throat> anyway, of course, <coughs> one of the more bad scenes, of course, they try to fight the gremlins. They try to get all of them in one place. Of course, where's the best scene, best place in town where it could be dark all the time and you don't have to worry about the bright lights? Well, the local movie theater, of course. And the local movie theater was radically showing. Um, you know, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, or all things like that. And you do see clips of, of Snow White, and what they did was they, uh, they kill all these gremlins, was they decided to blow up the movie house by busting in the gas tank and, and laying down off the, the gas on fire. First they broke, broke the gas line, which was, you know, you filled up the whole movie thing with, with gas. This regular gas, a gasoline gas, okay? Um, or, or gas line for you know the gas line for the movie theater, and they lit it on fire because they blew everybody up except for uh, Stripe. Stripe was the lucky one he got out, and and of course it, they were chasing him down, and he got into the toy local toy store, and of course when he ended was still getting him into the sunlight, which which was one of the other rules for the gremlins, and of course he. Got into the sun, got into sunlight when he got tricked into being in, into a beam of a, a sunbeam, and of course he got cut by the sunbeam, and that's how they went out and they beat all the gremlins. I do remember when the, when this movie came when the first gremlins movie came out in 1984. I think it was just before uh, the PG-13 reading came out. So, sorry about the noise, that's why it stopped. And it was just before the PG-13 wing came out. And then of course you just had PG, Rainer G, PG, and R. And of course there was a lot of violence, in the, not that much cursing, but there was a lot of violence in, in the movie of course, with the gremlins attacking people. There was a scene where the uh, Zach Gallagher's mother was stuffed a gremlin in the blender and she puts it on and kills, a kill, kills one gremlin in the blender and of course it also kills another one in a, um, in a microwave oven you know, and, it blew, and the gremlin blew up in a microwave oven that was, you know, those were pretty graphic scenes and the other one that was pretty graphic well not only the one they mentioned with the main villain gremlin dying in the, in the sun with the, with the sunlight the other one was when uh, the science teacher got gets attacked by the gremlins. The, 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 on the one particular gremlin they was examining. Um, the, the, those three scenes were pretty gra pretty graphic scenes you know, for a PG film. But I didn't get a PG-13 rating because it didn't exist quite yet. Not, not, not until the end of the uh, year of 1984. And then we, and the original Gremlins did make a bowl of money uh, for a time. I do remember when people were talking about this film and said, "Oh, should you go see it? Should you go see it?" So oh, maybe maybe I should see it. Does uh, out of spite because you know, uh, movie critics were, were encouraging parents not to take the kids to see this film. I said, "That's all I had in here to go see it," and so I went to see it. And we I remember my mo my mother and my sister, and we didn't think it was all that. Bad. We all thought it was a good movie. Uh, six years later, well, since they're playing a time left, uh, six years later, the, the sequel came out called Gremlins 2: The New Batch. And instead of being in a in a small town, uh, they saw in the first. Well, maybe I should go go back to the first one. They did quite finish it up. Uh, the movie actually, the first Gremlins movie. Actually, ended with Key Luke coming back to the house, and of course, that's when he heard what happened in the town. The girl attacked by the gremlins, and he took Gizmo back. And at the end, that was actually how the movie actually ended with the original owner of Gizmo take, taking him back to his little Chinatown shop because he didn't think they were responsible responsible enough to have Gizmo. And that's how the first movie ends. So six years late, six years later, and I think it would have been just good enough if they just had just the original movie. That's when it should have ended on a cliffhanger like that. 
because you always be wondering if they will be ever be responsible enough to have uh, a mogwai or take care of one. Well, six years later, you had the sequel, which is like way too long for, to have one. And they just brought back Phoebe Cates and Zach Gallagher in this film. Plus, I think also one of the one of the neighbors they brought back in this film as well. But instead of being in the little town they were in, they were in an office building. Or was they like it was like a TV studio? It was like an off huge office building, like like TV, like turn broadcasting so it was a C or a CNN type building. And but uh, both Phoebe Cates and Zach Gallagher were, were working in the, working in this office building, and the Gizmo's owner dies, and it was like this evil developer, and Gizmo ended up getting out, and he ends up. I don't know. I still don't know how how he walked this in. I mean, it was really silly. Gizmo ends up finding uh, Zach Gallagher's character, and of course he took him in and took care of him. And of course, what happens? Of course, he gets wet again and creates more gremlins, and all the gremlins took over the building. Uh, of course, what happens? Of course, at the end, they all get burned by sunlight at the end of the film, and that's pretty much it. But the second film was more like a parody of the first movie. The first one was very, like I said earlier, it was very, very good. I still like the movie to this day. But the second one was a piece of crap. Because it, was more, it acted more like a parody. And they, and, they, and they were making all kinds of jokes. Oh, there's always midnight somewhere. You know, how do how you know uh, which midnight you're talking about? Because there's always midnight, because then every hour there's a midnight someplace. So how can, you, how can you know if you're feeding a gremlin after midnight because every time zone you eventually get a midnight in every time zone in the world. So, so they're making those types of jokes about, about the, you know, the ruse to take care of Gizmo. And of course there was that guy, uh, Cable Access show that was being filmed with a guy dressed up like, like, uh, like Dracula. And there was interviewing the gremlin. There was even one gremlin. There was like a lab. There's a science lab inside the building, and the gremlin was took this like this grain vitamin type crap, and it became extremely small. And he sounded like Cal I think Kelsey Grammer actually provided the voice of this gremlin, and he he gave like a real intellectual science voice. I mean, a real intellectual type voice. It was it was really silly. Uh, they call him Grain that one. Uh, uh, sp uh, Spike, a, a Stripe, he didn't come back in the, si in the sequel. Um, but when I saw this movie, there was one particular scene, I actually went to, went to see when it came out, and I'm embarrassed to say that I have, because the movie was, like I said before, the movie was crap. There's one scene, in one particular part of the movie when the film gets messed up. And we thought that was such a technical thing in the, with the, with the movie projector. But it was actually was a grill and messing with the film itself and it got a huge laugh because you saw the shadow of a gremlin on the on the on the movie screen and as a woman comes out of the movie scene she cut she complains to the manager and she found that and he found out that Hulk Hogan or the wrestler Hulk Hogan was in the audience and he pulls him out and he talks to the camera like I'm talking now and threatens him you stop missing hey brother stop missing this movie <laughs> and the person okay, okay, okay. And he promises to, um, and then the rest of the movie went okay. As soon as I saw that scene, you know this movie was going to be crap. I mean, th I mean, the second movie was such a waste. Um, uh, and I think it, pre it pretty much ruined the, f the original movie because, like I said earlier, the original movie was very, very good. The second one was crap. So if I were you guys, I just stick with the first one in this movie and avoid the second one. Because the second one was shit. Uh, so that's a review of the Gremlins movie. I'm uh, sure Gremlins movies. Uh, please click on the video, please read it. Feel free to comment on it. Please subscribe to my channel and please forward this video to your Facebook pages. You can catch all my videos on not only on my YouTube channel, but also on my also on uh, the website rallyc.com. That's all WDY rallyc.com. It's the home of the Rally Reviewer. Check out all of his TV trash uh, videos, the P.O. Pizza Guy, the Wrestling Mark, plus all of his other content. 
and that's how we want to want to contribute to his reps to his website and go there and see all of his TV trash videos and particularly please check out his videos on the Disney afternoon series he's been doing for like about last month or so plus you also go check out his Charlie Brown review for um, the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown he also did a video on a review of it as well but his is really was much better so I suggest you check out both videos uh, that thanks for watching catch you next time